The Heaviside step function, as its name suggests, has a graph which has the shape of a step. If we want to position the step at the point t equals 0, we would write a suffix 0 on the function, hence h0 of t. I've drawn the graph and I've drawn it in red to show clearly that the graph runs along the negative t-axis until the origin and then jumps up to the height of the step. Usually we take it to be 1. It then continues to the right, maintaining that same height. If we wanted to write a rule for the function, we would have to do it in piecewise form. We would have to say that it has the value 1 when t is greater than or equal to 0, but 0 when t is less than 0. Sometimes we want the step to be positioned at some other point along the axis. Supposing we wanted to step at t equals a. The graph now looks like the one I've drawn here. The jump is up to 1 at t equals a. We can indicate this function by calling it h suffix a of t, but of course it is also the same as just performing a horizontal shift on h0. In other words, it's the same as h0 of t minus a. The rule for the function would again have a piecewise structure. We would have to say that it is 1 for t greater than or equal to a, and 0 for t less than a. Heaviside step functions can be used to turn other functions on and off at any position we like. Consider the product h0 of t multiplied by t squared. Clearly when t is negative, h0 is 0 and so the whole function becomes 0. On the other hand, when t is 0 or greater than 0, the Heaviside function is now 1. It has stepped up. The result is that y is now 1 times t squared, or just t squared. What has happened is that the function remains 0 until we get to the origin, and then suddenly t squared is turned on. We could turn on t squared at some other position if we wanted. Here's the position t equals a. What I now need to do is to use y equals h a of t times t squared. The graph will run along the axis, but now it will continue until we reach a, and then it will suddenly jump to a squared. And notice also that the gradient is not zero, so it will already start with a slope heading upwards in the form t squared again. Let's briefly summarize what we've learned so far. To turn on a function f of t at t equals a, we can use y equals the product h a of t multiplied by f of t. What now though if we wanted to turn a function on and then off again? Let's consider the function y equals minus h a of t times, let's use t squared again. What would this look like? We can draw a t axis and y. We put on the point t equals a. We run still along the t axis until we get to a. And now we turn on the function t squared, but it's negative, so it's going to be underneath the axis. It looks something like that. This could be used to cancel the effect of t squared above the axis. How might we do this? Well, it's very simple. If we want to turn on t squared at t equals 0 and then off at t equals a, we simply make the combination 
y equals t squared. We turn it on at 0. And then we need to subtract t squared beyond a. And so we use minus h a of t. This function will look like nothing until the origin. Then suddenly it will turn on t squared. And then when we get to a, we're now subtracting t squared as well as including t squared with the h0. So we get altogether beyond a t squared minus t squared again. The function has been turned on at 0 and turned off at a. Notice that the point a a squared is not included. It has been subtracted to 0 and so the function is open at the top. Let's finish by summarizing what we've now learned. If we want to turn f of t on at, it doesn't even have to be the origin, it could be say at say a. And then off again at t equals b, and we'll assume b is to the right of a. Then we use f of t and we turn it on with h a of t and then off again with h b of t. That concludes what I'd like to say about switching on and off functions with the heavy side function.